Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you all to worship on this week of Thanksgiving. Very grateful uh, to be together. Thankful for all of you. Certainly thankful for a warm building. So it's starting to feel a little bit like winter now, so that's we're fine with it warming up. I thought Ohio was supposed to be a lot warmer state, right? So <laughs> no, it has been very well so far. I mean, yeah, we we were already saying that this is about the warmest November that we had had. So had to have a little blast now and then to remind you of cold and warmth and give us something to be thankful for when it warms back up again this next week. So that will be very good. But again, uh, we welcome all of you today. Very grateful to be together uh, for worship today. One of the things you'll notice is we do have our bell choir back. Uh, we decided we have a Thanksgiving themed song we gather together. So you can prepare yourself right now that later on in the service when we invite people to come forward, remember the, we like to call this a cross-generational bell choir. So that, that requires multiple generations of participation, uh, but as well, I always uh, like to say that uh, this is not a church that focuses on guilt and making you feel like you have to do something. It's always an invitation, so if you want to give it a try, you're welcome to. If you'd rather sit and watch, that's perfectly fine too. The Lord loves you either way, right? Very good, but it is a lot of fun, <laughs> so you can give that a try. Uh, one other thing to notice is we do have communion today, and you'll see our, our standard uh, table that's right here is not there because we're going to try communion a little differently. We're just experimenting with some things today uh, in the coming weeks. And so for communion today, you'll actually be coming up the center aisle. Uh, when it's just, we'll still be doing it from front to back, so you'll still be the first row that'll come up. But you'll come up the center and then just go over to the end like you normally would to make a line across just like we've done uh, in the past. And then when everyone communes, then you simply go down the side aisle and you'll notice Right over here in the window and right over there in that window, there are baskets to place uh, your empty cups. So just place the cups in those baskets instead of returning to the middle. That makes sense? So just come down the middle, go around the sides and back to the pew that way. To test your ability to go backwards, you'll have to reverse the way that you go into the pew. But you're extremely scared. smart, <laughs> gifted people. I know you can figure it out. That would be great. And you can help each other out if you forget, so it's always good. But... Uh, with all that in mind, uh, we are thankful again for our worship assistance. Uh, we've got Kathy helping us read today and Molly on the computer and Addie Lydia Nursery, so thank you for that. Uh, you will notice on the table uh, this week and next week as well, uh, we do have some Advent devotions that you can pick up. There's Advent devotions for uh, young children that have stickers in them. There's Advent devotions for teenagers. There's one for families and different people of different generations. So if you want to grab a little Advent devotional book, we've got those on the table back there since our Advent season will start next Sunday already. Uh, and again, with all that in mind, I invite us... Uh, oh yeah, one more thing is the connection cards. If you would like to have more information about the church or we don't have your contact information right, please feel free to fill out a connection card. And also, if you have a prayer request, just write that in the Advent card, place it in the offering plate, and then we can include that uh, in our prayers for Sunday. Now let us pray as we prepare our hearts for worship. Uh, good and gracious God, we do come before you with thanksgiving and praise for all that you've done today. We ask that you would help us to focus our hearts and minds on you, dedicate this time uh, to remove everything that distracts us from your presence and fill us with renewed awe at all that you have done, that you are good, that you are with us, and therefore we can face anything uh, knowing that you are by our side. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able. One other thing this Sunday is, is Christ the King Sunday. So in honor of Christ the King, we are going to sing the hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Oh, yeah. 
Gracious God, we thank you once again for the gift of this day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our king in the midst of all of the instability in the world and all the struggles of politics. We thank you that you are the true ruler of our life, that you are the same yesterday and today and forever. And as we are in your hands, we never need fear. Amen. We now pause for a moment to reflect on how we might have fallen short in this last week, knowing that we have this gift every time we come together to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness and the new beginning that the Lord offers us. So let us pause for a brief moment of confession and silence. Lord, we thank you once again that you meet us right where we are, that we don't have to hide, that we don't have to pretend that we are perfect, that we have everything together. We thank you that you love us as we are, and we thank you that you offer us your wonderful gift of forgiveness. So receive all of our failures, all our struggles, all our doubts, all of our sins. We lift them up to you, and we trust again that your word is true, that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and just, and you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you that we are forgiven people in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to have a seat as we continue with our Bible readings for today. God sightings. There you go. Very good. Thank you. It wasn't in here. I'm looking at the bulletin. That was one of the things we said. We're trying to get a larger TV for us with bad eyes, and I can't see the monitor in the back anymore. But that's terrible. Yes, we don't want to forget that. So also, especially on this week of Thanksgiving, we want to continue our normal process of thinking how it is that we have seen or heard uh, or experienced the Lord in our life during this last week. Uh, again, if you want to write down a God sighting, we have those yellow God sighting slips that you can pick up on your way in. We also said if you have any visual things that you would like to share, if you ever have uh, pictures that remind you of ways that you have seen or heard or experienced God during the last week, you may do so. And uh, I believe Teresa submitted one uh, this week. So in the next slide, I believe it's on there. All right? I don't know if you want to say anything. You're way in the back there. but that... No, we were, kept hearing this noise. We live in a log cabin in the woods, and we kept hearing this noise upstairs. We have these good people in the woods that the one in the house needs. So I, and I went up there and said, what is that? There was this huge animal just sitting right outside the trees, real close to the house. Right, so the God sighting of just being able to look out your windows and seeing this owl come day after day after day and even be able to get a nice picture of it. Wow. Well, that's amazing camouflage to see it at all, let alone be able to get a picture of it. So that's, yeah, certainly seeing the Lord, uh, evidence of God's presence in nature. Any other God sightings that anyone would like to share this morning? That is pretty... Well, continue to be, yes, you have one? Marriage has survived for 18 years. The God sighting of our marriage surviving 18 years. There you go. That's absolutely. Amen. I like the way you put that. That's, that's very nice. Not the, the wonderful blessing of being together, but we survived 18 years. Yes, that's good. Certainly very grateful for the Lord with us and all of, all of the ups and downs of daily life and year after year. Yes, very good. Okay, with that, I think I got my order right that we'll have our psalm for today. The Old Testament reading today is from Psalms chapter 100, verses 1 to 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The good news reading today is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. 
Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the readings. Thank you. So here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, yes, we love to have anyone come up that would like to help out with our cross-generational bell choir. Again, there's no practice and no experience necessary. I simply show you these color-coded cards, and when you see it, ice, just like that. I'll do it on the right side so you see the color-coded card. You'll see your color up here, and then you'll ring when you get the color. So love to have a few people join us, a few more in those cross-generations here. There we go. Great job, everybody. Everybody grab a color here. Nice. There's a few more. If you wait long enough, a couple other people will join us. All right. Let's make sure that we have all our colors represented at least. There we go. We've got dark blue, light blue. Need a yellow here. Very good. Okay. We've got a yellow. There we go. Mark's going to join us. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to try two colors. There we go. Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. All right. There we go. Are we good? Okay. All right. So once again, the music will st after the music starts, I'm going to raise up these cards. And then when you see your color on one of these cards, you ring it. And, so, and this is how we try. There is actually a technique that you, you try to hold it like this on that. Take your hand like that and hold it on the, the white part there. There you go. That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. So there's, ring it. And if, so as long as you see your color, you ring away. If you don't see your color, there. All right. Very good. I think we're all ready. I'm going to kneel down here. You can all see the cards. This is our Thanksgiving song. We gather together for God's blessing.
Thanks a lot. We appreciate bravery coming up here and enjoying that bell choir together. Again, we always give thanks to the churches, one of the few places that we do gather with multiple generations and we have a chance to actually do something together, to talk with one another or to enjoy the gift of music together. So thank you for that and we'll try to do that about at least on a, a monthly basis to continue to have bell choir be a part of our worship service. Again, a reminder as you prepare for uh, the sermon, we do have a spot in here to make some notes if you want to write some things down in ways that you are in, uh, having God's Word speak to you in specific ways. Uh, if you also have a Bible along and if you're one of the people that take notes in the margins of your Bibles, that can be another a great way to reflect on year after year as you think of different ways uh, that you might hear the same passage but something different stands out. It's always amazing that wherever we are in life, when we hear uh, that specific word that day, uh, God can definitely do some different things in our hearts. So let us now join together again in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for you, the living word, speaking to us through the written word, the Bible. We pray that you would speak to our hearts today. Fill us with your hope, your love, and your uh, wonderful gift of thanksgiving. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we gather together today on this week of, of Thanksgiving, right, uh, we, we certainly understand that this is a time to give thanks. And, and as I look back at this month, I realize really the, the whole month has been focused on Thanksgiving as we gather together as a church. If you remember, we started by giving thanks for all of the saints in our life who have gone before us and who have passed on the faith to us. Uh, the week after that, we gave thanks for veterans, those who have served to protect our country and our freedoms, giving thanks for all of them. And then certainly as we look around us now and we see uh, empty fields ready for a winter rest, we give thanks for all the, the farmers and the laborers who put food on our tables and allow us to have uh, something to eat as we celebrate special things like Thanksgiving. Uh, and as Jessica said on a more personal note, uh, this is a time that I certainly want to give thanks uh, to God for 18 years of marriage. Today is actually our anniversary, and so I'm very grateful that Jessica was willing to marry me twice on the same day. Ask us about that sometime. It's a good story. But we did get married two times on the same day, uh, but to each other, not to different people. That's right. That's a good, good thing. We married each other. But uh, yes, I'm very grateful for November 20th, 2004, the big day, and it just happened right over in Wabash, Indiana, not too far away from here. Uh, certainly I'm very thankful for my children as well and for our family. And we are very grateful uh, for all of you, our church family. Uh, know that, that we are so thankful for all the ways that you have warmly welcomed us. We thank you for being there from day one and helping unload way too many boxes and things uh, that we had in our vehicles. Uh, thank you for bringing us meals, for giving gifts, for giving words of encouragement and especially for inviting us into your life and, and getting to know us and letting us have the blessing of getting to know you so that we're no longer strangers, but that we can uh, truly feel like a family, like brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, so know that this Thanksgiving, we especially thank God for all of you and for all the ways that you have warmly welcomed us and helped us be a part of, of a new family here at New Creation. Uh, again, as we look at this morning's psalm, we're told the same thing, that we are to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And another way of saying that is simply, as we gather together in God's house, one of the things that we should do is to give thanks. And so with that in mind, I, I would invite you to pause for a moment right now and consider one or two things that you are thankful for today. So just pause and think about that. What are you thankful for today? And then, if you're willing, simply turn to someone next to you and I invite you to share together what is it that you are thankful for today. Take a moment to do that.
Very good. Well, thanks for sharing some of those things together. That's always a great idea uh, to do as a family, as with your neighbors, with one another, to share where we see God in our life and to share uh, what we're thankful for. And as we do that, I think we can develop something that, that many people have called uh, an attitude of gratitude, right? And we can develop that kind of attitude of gratitude by speaking out loud of the things that we're thankful for, especially on this week of Thanksgiving, uh, when that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, and, and while it's nice to do that this week, I think it's even more important that we would develop that attitude that helps us give thanks uh, throughout the year, right? Not just during Thanksgiving, not just in the good times, but in the hard times as well. Uh, give thanks even when we don't feel like it, when it's most difficult. Perhaps that's when it's most important. And so that's what one thing that we want to do today is to figure out how it is that we can have that attitude of gratitude, how it is that we can give thanks in all circumstances, in good times and in bad. And, and, and one way to answer that question is to ask another question. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you something very simple. How many of you got dressed today? <laughs> Judging from looking around, looks like it's pretty much universal. All right, thank you for that. Uh, we all appreciate that. <laughs> It's a good reason to have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, but how many of you expected that your clothes would just jump on your body as soon as you woke up today? None of my kids raised their hands. I'm surprised they didn't try to say, like, oh, I want to do that. Uh, no, right? We, we, we realize that every day that we get up, we have to make the choice to put on clothes, to choose what we will wear for that day. And our choices matter, don't they? Now you think about it, I, it, it wouldn't be wise to have a, a t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops on if it's zero degrees outside, although some people in Minnesota do that just for fun. Uh, but it also wouldn't be a great idea to put on a giant uh, parka and you know, snow pants if you're going swimming in the summer. Uh, clothes matter, it makes a difference. Uh, and, and that's kind of what we hear in a Bible reading as well. Our Bible reading from, uh, from Colossians tells us how it is that God wants us to clothe ourselves. It says, clothe yourselves with good attitudes, positive mindsets, things like compassion and kindness and humility and patience, right? Uh, that means that, that every morning that we get up, we can decide what thoughts enter our mind and what attitudes will help focus our framework for the day, right? And some choices are much better than others, just like clothing. It also means... Uh, that just like we don't expect our clothes to jump on us, uh, we also shouldn't expect that we will just automatically feel grateful or that we'll automatically uh, have a great day and be filled with thankfulness. Just as you need to, to put on a shirt, you also need to make the decision to allow gratefulness to enter your mind. Uh, we need to decide that today we are going to invite the peace of Christ to rule our hearts instead of worry. And if you want to be dressed in love, then you're going to need to let go of some other things like bitterness and anger and all of the things that can keep love out of our hearts. Uh, as I think about being willing to let go of some things, I'm reminded uh, back in high school and late college, I was really into a band called The Grateful Dead. Some of you know that band, right? It was around for a very long time. Who in here, anyone deadheads at all? No, not really. Not even Tom. There you go. Look at that. No. All right. I could be the only one. That's all right. I'll be on my own. Uh, but anyway, I, re I really, really enjoyed that band. I had lots of tapes. Remember what tapes were? Yeah. Yeah. Cassette tapes, bootlegs, you'd trade with each other, uh, oh, mailing them back and forth and all of that. I had a whole bunch of CDs as well. And it was actually at their last show, which was in Soldier Field in Chicago. And, and throughout uh, several of those years, you know, I, I racked up quite a collection of tie-dyed T-shirts with skulls on them or dancing bears on them. And, and I kept those shirts around for a long time because they brought back a lot of good memories. It was music that I really liked. They're kind of a jam band, and as a drummer, it's, it's just fun to sit back and to listen to all of that and just play along with all of the music. Uh, but then, several years ago, maybe somewhere around you know, six, seven years ago, I finally decided that it was time to, to donate and kind of get rid of all of my deadhead wear uh, because I realized, you know, as much as I liked it, I really didn't wear it anymore. And when I did wear it, it just it, it didn't really fit anymore. It wasn't, it didn't really look good on me. Uh, and, and sometimes we can make that choice ourselves, and sometimes we need other people to help us. And it's funny, actually, Jessica and I were just uh, talking about this the other day. We have some friends, and, and I'll call them uh, Jim and Nancy. 
And, and Jim and Nancy were, were joking with us, and they were say, talking about one time that Jim was trying to leave the house and that Nancy would not let him out the front door because he had picked out a terrible outfit and he looked so awful and, and everything that was funny. So he had to go back to the room and, and kind of reset what he was going to wear for the day. I don't know if any of you have ever had that happen or not. <laughs> Maybe not, right? Some of us guys know that, that that sometimes happens. You need to kind of get approval before you go out in public if you're doing things. Uh, but we also know that it, that it tends to not work the other way around very well. Uh, most of us guys have learned that, that if your wife or your girlfriend asks you what their outfit looks like, you know, the only acceptable answer is great. Uh, however, I think we also would agree that, that, that a true friend would probably tell you, you know, that that might not be your best look. Maybe, maybe you could get something better, right? Uh, and I think that most of us, you know, we have things in our closet that don't look good. We have things that we should have gotten rid of a long time ago. And I bet as well that we all have attitudes and we all have mindsets that we should have gotten rid of a long time ago. The good news is that, that Jesus is our good and loving and honest friend. And he can come alongside us and help us dress for success, Right? Jesus sees our complaining attitude and says, you know, that's, that's not your best look. I know that you can do better than that. Uh, he hears us gossiping and says, maybe it's time to let that bad habit go. Maybe it's time to start thinking how you can speak well of that person instead. Or maybe Jesus hears the negative things that we say about ourselves and tells us, I love you and I want you to let go of those negative and those condemning thoughts. Those don't do you justice. They're not the person that I made you to be. I mean, it would be one thing, you know, if we had no other clothes to wear, if all we had was old Grateful Dead t-shirts. Uh, but the fact is that when Jesus died and rose again, he gave us an entirely new wardrobe, right? He, he's given us things like compassion and love, patience, thankfulness and joy. Uh, so... It's time for us to put those new clothes on. I mean, why would we want to wear hate when God has given us a beautiful garment of love? Why would we want to wear nasty, judgmental attitudes condemning everyone around us when God has given us the clothing of mercy and grace? So again, the question is, how do we do that? How do we develop attitudes of gratitude? How do we wear the clothing that God wants us to wear? And one simple way is to set them out the night before, right? Uh, just like we prepare in advance for what we're going to wear. So what I would encourage you to think about this week is this. Uh, a, a, as you are debating what clothes you're going to wear for the next day, also set aside some time and think about what attitudes you want to wear, what your mindset should be for that day. Ask yourself, how will I fight negative thoughts today and focus on Jesus instead? How will I avoid gossip or speaking poorly of those around me and think about uplifting things to say instead? What truth do I need to put on this morning that will help guard my mind and give me a good mindset throughout the day? And with that in mind, that's one of the reasons why the very best thing that we can do is learn to start each day in God's Word. Uh, whether that's opening the Bible, whether that's having a devotional plan. A lot of council members have used the Bible app during the last few months, and that's a great thing. It's a thing you can get on the computer and your phone where it just gives you a verse of the day and it gives you stories every day and devotions to help you start the day on the right path, right? To help Jesus enter your heart and mind and help give you that right mindset of filling with his truth, with his love, with his mercy, so that you can have an attitude of gratitude no matter what it is that you are going to face that day. Uh, in closing, I just want to also acknowledge that, that it can be very, very hard for some of us to be thankful, right? I, I mean, we have many reasons not to be thankful, especially in light of the world around us, in light of all the conflicts and the struggles, the wars, uh, the physical dangers that are around us, the financial problems, uh, sometimes the mental health issues that we and our loved ones face. With all of those things in mind, it's very easy to be upset. It's very easy to list the reasons that we have uh, to, to not be thankful. And yet, that's exactly when we most need to turn to Christ and choose to focus on his gifts instead. Now, of course, as we gather together today, we, we're not thankful for violence. 
We are not thankful for wars like the conflict in Ukraine that's lasted for so long. But we are thankful that God's love is stronger than hate. Likewise, we're not thankful for inflation and high gas prices and high everything prices. But we are also grateful that the peace of Christ is stronger than worry and fear that can tend to control us at times like this. And finally, we are not grateful when our loved ones suffer or when we go through sickness and pain. But we are thankful that in the midst of suffering, in the midst of the trials that we face, we have that sure and certain hope of resurrection. And we have the promise that there is nothing in all of creation, not violence, not sickness, not even death itself that can separate us from the love of God. And for that hope, we give thanks. Let us pray. Loving Savior, we thank you that you have provided a brand new wardrobe for us. We ask that you would guard our hearts and minds today and help us choose to put on gratitude, thankfulness, praise, and joy just as you desire for us. We know we can do all these things, not because we have to, not because they're a way to prove ourselves or to make ourselves worthy of your love, but because of your amazing love which has already been poured out for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That in mind, we continue with the response song, a time for us to pause and reflect on the scripture that we've heard and the message. The response song today is Amazing Love.
certainly is our hope and our prayer that all we do would honor the Lord. Now let us join together with other Christians all over the world confessing our faith. We'll use the statement of faith found in your bulletin and on the screen. I believe in God, the creator of all life, the source of all love, the one who brings peace and the giver of every good and perfect gift. I believe in Jesus Christ, his God's only son. Jesus was born of a virgin and lived as no other man had lived. Jesus suffered and died for the sins of the world. I believe Jesus' death and resurrection has given me new life, and I will live with him for all eternity. I believe in the Holy Spirit, God with us. I have been called by the Spirit, enlightened by the Spirit, and gifted for service by the Spirit. God is at work today, and the Holy Spirit is the means by which God continues to demonstrate love and concern for me. I believe I can know and experience God in prayer, forgiveness, the sacraments, and the community of faith. Amen. As we continue now, we receive our gifts of offerings. I are reminded that we do also have um, the Consecration Sunday envelopes that are still on the back table. If any of you would like to fill out an envelope with an estimate of what you would like to give over the next year, there's envelopes to do that on the back table. Otherwise, we have opportunities to give during offering and the offering plates. And on that side table right there, uh, we also have Simply Giving forms if any of you would like to sign up for uh, automated giving as some has done in the last few months. But again, let us pause now and reflect on how it is that we can give back a portion of what the Lord has first given to us. to these offerings. We pray that you would bless and multiply them for the sake of the mission of this church and your kingdom coming here in Ottawa Glandorf as it is in heaven. Amen. I invite us to join together in prayer as we lift up concerns for ourselves, our country, and for all those who are in need. Let us pray. Wonderful Savior, we give you thanks for this week of Thanksgiving. We give you thanks for all the reasons we have to be grateful. Help us remember this day that everything we have is a gift from you. Open our eyes to see your blessings all around us. We thank you especially for the blessing of one another that we can gather together for worship. We can support each other. We can walk with each other in all the joys and trials of life. We thank you for this church. We thank you for all the churches in our community and in our world, all the ways that your light is shining in this world. Help us unite with brothers and sisters in Christ today to be your church through our words and actions. 
Gracious God, we also lift up to you all those who are in need of your healing touch as we gather together. Uh, we take time to speak those names either silently or aloud as we pray for those in need of your physical healing. Marin, Gary, Shanna, Father, we also lift up to you all those who can victory over cancer, that you would bring them healing and strength. We pray for breakthroughs in medicine, pray for good responses to treatment, Lord, and for remission. And we thank you as well for your healing power over each of them. As we gather together today, we also know that there are many in our community that are mourning the loss of loved ones. And so we especially pray for Roger Selhorst family, for Killian Moline family, for Ruth Jarab's family, for Bob Mag's family, for all those who have lost loved ones recently. We ask that you would surround them with your hope. We ask that you would fill them with your peace, walk with them in the midst of their sorrow, and point them to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Gracious God, we also lift up to you Missionary Church of Ottawa and Pastor Rennie and the mission of their congregation. We pray for those struggling with mental health, depression, and anxiety, that you would surround them with your truth and hope and love and with systems and people around that can walk with them. We pray for our schools, for all those who serve and protect our country and our nation and our city. We pray for all those struggling with employment. And we also lift up prayer concerns that are near and dear to us now, once again speaking those prayer concerns either silently or aloud. Pray for safe travels for all those traveling over Thanksgiving. Lord, we also give you thanks for the birthdays and the anniversaries that are celebrated this week. We thank you for another year of life, another year of marriage, another reason to give thanks for all that you have done for us. So all the prayers that we've lifted up to you silently and allowed, all the things that only you know we need, we lift them up and we ask for your perfect will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time we prepare ourselves to receive the Lord's Supper. Once again, we're reminded as we come forward for the Lord's Supper that all who believe in Christ are welcome to receive his gifts of forgiveness and grace. So we come up and remember Jesus' true presence in this sacrament, reminding all of us that we are loved that we are forgiven, and that we have a new beginning each and every day because of Christ's sacrifice for us and because of his Holy Spirit alive and at work within us. And may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Amen. And one of the things we are most thankful for as we gather together this week of thanksgiving is for the sacrifice of Christ who died, that we may be forgiven, that we may be made sons and daughters of the Most High Lord, and that we can spend eternity with Him now and forever. And so we remember that our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which He was betrayed, took bread and broke it. He gave it to His disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, He took the cup and gave thanks, and He gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And a reminder, as you come forward, you'll be going up the center aisle this time. 
and then simply fill in until you're on the end so that we have one line going across the front. As you come around, we'll be giving you a piece of bread, and then you'll also have the pre-filled grape juice, which is in here, or if you take the empty containers and cups, those will be filled uh, with wine. Once you're done, you simply go back down the sides and you can place your empty containers uh, in the two baskets which are on the two sides. I now invite a communion assistant to come forward as we prepare ourselves to receive the Lord's presence. Oh 
the crown Tell the world of the treasure you Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I have a few announcements of ways that we can serve the Lord in the coming weeks, and then we will have our sending song. Hello, my name is Terry Samuelson, and um, just some of the announcements. Um, there's different opportunities, one through we're going to be giving to the thrift store um, and then also the food pantry. So just look for ways of that. And we are going to be doing a reverse advent cal calendar. And what that is, is you're going to get a calendar and it has suggestions of putting food in a box. And then at the end, what you'll do is bring it to church. And what we're going to do is split it between the food pantry and um, the thrift store. So um, we've done that in the past, but we're going to bring it back. And on Thursday, December 8th at Shelly Muma's, um, there's, it says bring three dozen cookies and uh, cookie exchange and bunko party. Just for the women. Sorry, guys. <laughs> bring some cookies home for you. And um, Teresa has um, some announcements too. Well, I just want to thank everyone that filled the shoe boxes or that gave money toward the shipping. I hope everyone had fun because it's, it's just a great opportunity for other children to hear the word of the Lord that might not have that opportunity and it's been successful. They're thinking this year they will give away over 200 million or reach 200 million will be the total boxes given out since it started in 1990. We had a total of 44 boxes. The girls won out. 27 girl boxes and 17 boy boxes. But I was amazed. You guys are Awesome, the way you fill these boxes and you pack so much into that small box. And there were so many great things in there. I hope everyone had fun doing it. Mm -hmm. I had fun looking at the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so we even had some more come in today. So I just I just thank you for making this such a, a good opportunity for us to reach out to the world and let, let children know about Christ. Now, 
to update you a little bit on the parade. We're coming along on the float through a lot of good people helping out with that. And this year we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to give out to some of the families as far as we can go. We have little nativity ornaments and they're gonna go in these little gold bags. They're just cute as can be. And then we have cards made up that tell about our church, the information if they want more, and an invite to our Christmas Eve service. So we're very excited about doing something different. Thanks to Pastor Dan for giving us that idea. It was awesome. We'd still like to give out candy. So if you would like to donate a bag of candy or if you've got some left over from Halloween you want to get rid of, <laughs> we will take it. So just bring it in and just drop it back there at the table. And we'll put it to good use because the candy thing still, we've got to do the candy thing. And the kids look forward to it. They like that wind up and really give it a toss out the <laughs> so, We thank you for everything. The outreach team has been very grateful for all the projects we came up with and you guys have just graciously joined in on them and accepted them doing them. So thank you. Hey, Teresa, you're not allowed to toss a candy. Also part of outreach, we're going to be, again, since it's Advent again, we are going to have the angel tree, and then um, we are going to be doing um, ringing of the bells for Salvation Army if we get a date for that. So just to give you a heads up on some of that, too. Closing song is the blessing. We stand in group.